All right, thank you for joining us this evening. My name's Christina Williams, and it's a real pleasure to be putting this interview together. Um, whether you're watching this uh, from wherever you're watching it around the world, and whether you're a new associate or you're still exploring the ACR opportunity, I'd like to welcome you to this very special interview with retired board certified podiatric surgeon and a CM medical board member and Ambassador Triple Diamond, Mr. David Silverman. Dr. David Silverman, excuse me. <laughs> and to host this very special interview, we have another Ambassador Triple Diamond from Australia, Malcolm Sword. Now, in case you have no idea what these titles mean, these gentlemen are incredibly successful and very well respected global entrepreneurs. They are pioneers in this field. They are pioneers of this groundbreaking technology and you really couldn't be in better hands tonight. Now, when people come to Explore ASEA for the first time, one of the most common questions is, but why doesn't my doctor know about it? Or hold on, I'm gonna to talk to my doctor about it. Well, I don't know about your doctor or how well he or she stays up to date with the latest research and progressive medicine, but there are many doctors and people in the medical profession who do know about ASEA, who work with this technology, and they are really the ones we should be listening to. So we're very fortunate to have with us Dr. David Silverman. Uh, we've got him in the hot seat and I'll hand over to Malcolm to fire off some questions. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thanks, Christina. Thank you, David. Thank you, Christina. So uh, thanks, David, for, uh, for joining us this morning, your time, and uh, this evening in, uh, in Southeast Queensland. And so I've just got a number of questions that I want to... Uh, just ask you, please, about um, and the first one is if you could just give us a little bit of background um, of you, your life uh, before you became uh, an associate, before you started with uh, with a C. If you could just give us a little bit of background of your of your life before joining a C, please. Definitely, and, and thanks, Christina. Thanks, Mal. Um, I know we're all kind of locked down right now. Um, <laughs> You're in Australia and I'm here in Florida in the United States. It's morning for me, evening for you, and I hope everybody's safe there. Um, so my background's podiatry and foot surgery, and I live outside of Washington, D.C. I'll be 60 this year. Um, I've sold my practice several years ago. I had my own practice, my own surgery center. I was board certified in foot surgery, foot orthopedics, primary podiatric medicine. Love practicing, lo love having my own practice. So I'm, Kind of psychologically unemployable. I knew my whole life. I, I just don't like working for anybody. I don't like being told what to do or vacations or amount of money I can make. Um, loved what I did. I felt kind of limited. Um, um, not, not just in scope of practice. I could operate up to the ankle and do all surgery, sports medicine, all of that. I felt kind of limited in, in the impact I was having in the world and time freedom um, as well. So I, I, well, I loved what I did and I loved helping people. I just felt like there was something more for me. I, I started listening to Tony Robbins when I was about what, my thirties and, uh, and um, it led me on a really, really cool path. Uh, but that's, that's my traditional background. We're, I'm married and my wife, Wendy, we're married for 32 years, three grown children and I uh, live half the time up in, in Washington. And when it gets cold, come down to, to Florida for the winter to play golf every day. Nice. Nice, thank you. The next question I have for you is, there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be watching this and they may not be aware really of what redox molecules are. In fact, most people that you and I call, most people, all of us call, have never heard of redox molecules. And so would you, would you briefly just explain what they are in simple terms? Um, for the average, so that the average person could understand what what are they and what is their function in the human body? Sure, and, and there's a lot of resources on this. One that's a really just a, a very neutral explanation of redox molecules for people that want something deeper that I'm going to give them now. There's a website called dredoxdoc, dredoxdoc.com. Great site. So what, what redox molecules are stands for reductant and oxidant. And when I first was shown this nine years ago by my dear friend, Debbie, who brought this to me, all she said was, David, I love you. I've got something incredible to share with you. And I hope you, I hope you investigate it and don't dismiss it as sounding too good to be true. And she told me what it had done with her mother's joint problems and breathing problems. And I saw her skin problem was, was basically gone. 
So I was curious, strictly now, not from a scientific background, not from a business opportunity background, not for health reasons. My dad was ill. Um, he had a pretty grave issue. So that was my driver, my motivation to take this very seriously. And I trusted my friend enough to, to, that what she had told me um, and what I saw just by looking on my phone when I was with her, that there was something here. On the surface, it looks like it's salt and water, this product. So let's go back to why it is made from salt and water. What's in the product, what the product is, is in us. It's native to the body. It's a native molecule, two types of molecules, reductants and oxidants. And our cells make redox signaling molecules. Uh, for, real quickly, for the little bit of people that might be science interested, I, I think most people don't really care. They want to know, is it, can it help me with my problem? And is it safe? What are the risks? And it's as safe as water. But our cells make redox signaling molecules. In the mitochondria, during what's called the Krebs cycle, during the time we create a molecule called, called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. <clears throat> well, when I was in school in the 80s, I was a biology major and then for pediatric medical school here in the US, we were taught that these little reductants and oxidants had no function in the 80s. They were just a, a useless byproduct during the a necessary and useless byproduct during the production of ATP. And when I researched this for my father at the end of 2010, when it was brought to me, I saw that literature popped up in the 90s stating that they're not useless. They have, they have some incredible functions. And it, since the 90s, more and more functions have been found. We would die without ATP, which is what it was known the mitochondria was for. But we would die without these molecules as well. So the reductants are negatively charged and the, and the oxidants are positively charged. And what happens, just for the people that say it's salt water, it's not. In the mitochondria, the sodium chloride molecules ripped apart. You have sodium and chloride. Hydrogen oxygen is ripped apart. You have a hydrogen oxygen in the water molecule, and they're recombined to make these negatively charged reductants, positively charged oxidants. So that's what they are, um, but we produce less and less and less as soon as our mitochondria start going downhill, which is before we enter puberty. I mean, we start producing less and less as we get older. So that's what redox molecules are in the body, and what they do, there's several functions. For people that understand glutathione, they activate our glutathione. I don't have, I don't think we have time to go into that. The biggest thing they do is they amplify signaling in the body. They make it so our cells can hear one another when there's a, when one's in trouble, dying, damaged, mutating, whatever it is. The, the immune system has to hear this, the call for help to go replace that bad cell. So they amplify the, fly this, amplify the signaling in the body. And so the louder the signal, faster the body can take care of itself. Faster we see visual things that from trauma get better. Um, the faster bones heal, um, the less health issues we have because the immune system is taking care of things. So that's what redox signaling molecules do in the body. And then, you know, they, they found a way to make it outside the body, identical to inside the body. And then there've been some double blind studies done on this as well, but I'll answer that if you have questions about that. When you first, all those years ago, nine years ago, when you looked at this, did it concern you in any way that a SEER was not a prescription drug? Did it concern you as a medical practitioner, as a <laughs> surgeon? Did it concern you? It, it, it didn't concern me at all. I've been out of the box as far as wellness since 1997. So this was, in, I saw things happen in 1977, 1997 that just made my head spin saying, wow, how could this work? This is not a drug. I was taught drugs and surgery was what you do for people. You know, you have a diagnosis, you prescribe a drug or you do surgery. Um, and and uh, in, in 1997, I, I just saw things happen that, that stunned me, stunned me. And, it, and, and, I, and people say, oh, placebo, this placebo, that. My placebo buster is to use anything that works on a person, use it on an animal. If it works on an animal, then it can't be a placebo. And I saw that happen back then. So I, I, when I saw that this was not a drug and it was a supplement, and then I saw the story behind it that a pharmaceutical company tried to buy it and, um, and, uh, and the patents and the trade secrets and all of it, um, it, it made sense to me that it was a disruptive innovation. It's not a drug, it's not a nutritional, but no, it didn't concern me at all because you know what? Drugs are lethal. Drug, they, they don't kill everybody, obviously, but there are three things about a drug that I love about this that are not uncommon. One is you can be allergic to a drug. You can't be allergic to this, it's in you. Two, you take too much of a drug, you are going to get sick because your liver can't metabolize it fast enough. And if you take too much more, you'll overdose. This is something called an LD50, lethal dose 50, look it up. 
This doesn't have that. It's made from saline. It's not metabolized by the liver. Take too much of it, your body turns the excess back into salt and water, which is what our cells are filled with, obviously. Third, when you take a drug, it, it could interact with another medication. You have to worry about drug interactions. And this is not a drug. So no, it didn't concern me. It thrilled me. I just had to validate that it was real. Great answer. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is, um, how do you guide people when they ask you about the scientific validation of a seer? How do you how do you guide people when people say, you know, show me the science or, or, or validate this? What do you do? How do you share that with people? Well, when I started, there wasn't a lot of, of third party validation, except that it was redox molecules. But now there's been a genetic expression, double blind study done by Torre Labs, and people can look up Torre. Um, and uh, you can pull that up at a seascience.com um, study. Um, show it's a show it was a placebo controlled double blind study with the placebo being saline because people say oh this is made from salt and water that's what it is so they did that they did the study with that and it showed that every person that drank a sea their genes turned back on people say well a lot of people don't understand genetic expression but genes don't just control your eye color or your height they control your cellular function and if your cells start turning off your cells don't function the way they did when you were younger and, and even young people can have problems if they have mitochondrial problems, but genes turn off as we age and you can see what happens to us as we get older, right? Not just visually with skin, but um, how fast we heal from the same injuries, how quickly we, we recover from falling off a bicycle at 10, 20, 40, 80, it changes. We have more diseases as we get older. So um, genes are turning off and it proved that this product turns every person that drank the product, eight weeks, just eight, it wasn't even a long trial, it was eight weeks. Every person that drank the product, eight ounces a day, 240 ml a day, their genes turned on. And not, and, and as very important genes, I say go to the study so you can see, genes that control, genes that control um, inflammation, digestion, hormones, vascular health, our innate immune system. So we can't make claims that it cures, heals, or treats anything because it's not a drug, but we can claim it turns the genes on that control these things. So um, that, that's probably the most important piece of study um, or, or study, but the, the best thing for anybody to do that is um, kind of skeptical, which a lot of people are, is to take the gel, and you'll, you'll probably ask me about that, and just do a little experiment yourself. We used to say before the gel came out in 2014, do a case study, get a case or two of the product and, and, and try it, track everything in your health and watch what happens to you over 90 days, make your own yeah. conclusions. Uh, but the gels made things a lot easier. Yeah, and a lot faster. In fact, I've watched when you and I were in uh, Kuala Lumpur last year when we were doing those group meetings, it would use the gel at, uh, in every meeting that we did and had uh, people come up and see the results in like 10 or 15 minutes. It was just incredible. And in a yeah. very short period of time, you can see and feel uh, the changes. Um, and done in open forum, it was very, it was very compelling. And the next question, thank you for that answer. Thank you very much. The next question I have for you is, why did you decide to engage in the ASEA business, the, the business opportunity? What did you see in that? And why did you engage in the opportunity nine years ago? I, I would say that um, it, I think it's pretty much a fact that 90% of people go through their whole life struggling or settling. 90%, 10% don't. I think it's less than that actually, but I think 90% of people go through their life struggling or settling in one of three major areas. And, and love can be another one, right? I'm just talking about um, money, not enough money, either, either struggling or settling, not enough time freedom, enjoy life, struggling or settling with time freedom. That was me in my practice, my podiatry practice. And third, struggling with life satisfaction, making a difference. You know, most people, it's a fact, 70% of people, I don't know about Australia, 70% of people in the US hate their job. I mean, they, they do it for money and benefits. And that's a terrible way to go through life, you know, and living for weekends and living for summer vacations and five out of seven days, you're just waiting for those two days. So for me, um, I, I got involved with network marketing First run, about six months, it was just about making money. And, and the company's still around. 
but it was just not me. And I, I, I wasn't helping anybody. It was just telecom com services, but it was the idea of residual income, having money come when, when you're working and when you're not working, which I didn't have in podiatry. So I fell in love with that concept in 96. Said I wasn't gonna do it again. 97, somebody helped my mother with a horrible pain problem with the product. And I, I said, wow, that's interesting. I didn't, and it was really, really out of the box, out of the box stuff. I'm like, wow, that works. I investigated, saw that it worked. I got behind that because it was helping people, right? Um, two years later, I, I wasn't planning on selling my practice. I just wanted to cut back on podiatry, but I fell in love with it. I fell in love with multi-level marketing. I fell in love with, with which would I, which what I, with what I felt was being done the right way, right? A product that made a difference, um, profitable, helping people, inspiring people, freeing people from pain. All those things was just so up my alley. The problem with that was I got to the top of that company and then I, I made a mistake by selling my practice because when I got to the top, I got to see the people running the company. And in my opinion, they were really bad uh, they had fooled me. They had made it sound like it was all about helping humanity and all of that. And I thought, man, multi-level marketing is a bunch of bad people. I'm never doing this again. So I stopped talking about the opportunity. I talked about the product, but the company made mistakes and was doing this. And, and I couldn't talk about the opportunity anymore because I didn't believe in it. I had to get a job, which I told you I was psychologically unavoidable. I got a job anyway, because I had to support my family as a consultant didn't want to go back into practice. Um, it was all managed care here, insurance, everything had changed. And I didn't want to start over again with that. I thought something will come along. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm meant to do more than be a consultant with this company. And that's when ASEA was brought to me. So for me, it was all about the product initially. I refused to look at the opportunity for several months, almost a year, because I had just had a bad taste about multi-level marketing. I thought these are bad, just bad people. Although Debbie told me how different this was, how the, these were not these were not multi-level marketing people looking for a product to sell. This was a breakthrough for humanity, which I had seen with my dad and I saw with a few other people. So I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna I, I'm not just gonna engage blindly like I did before. I'm gonna do a due diligence, a real due diligence. I saw what the product did. And I, I said, I, I got to meet the people running the company. I don't want to wait till I get to the top to find out that they're not what they appear to be. So I took the time to meet them and look in their eyes and ask them pretty direct, very direct questions. And, you know, Virtus Norton was in charge of international strategy of a $36 billion company. And business people know how big that is. $36 billion a year is a big company. And um, he's the one who started this company with Tyler, his son. Was amazing in his home right but when i looked them in the eye and i said why didn't you sell it to the pharmaceutical company just honestly why didn't you sell it and they proceeded to talk and and they got to a point where they were tearing up and it was the same story i heard from other people that had happened with them with the product and i realized they're doing this for the right reasons they could have walked away with eight figures just walked away and 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 the pharmaceutical company would have either taken it down a drug approval route or they would have buried it because it's that disruptive. And I said, okay, I'm getting involved with this. And, and that, so you're asking why I wanted residual income. I know that this is limitless income. You can do as make as much as you want in this, right? And how much is enough? I mean, how much do you need? Right. Um, but it, it's, it's fun. It's not work. I mean, it, it, it takes work. It takes effort to build it, but it's a joy. And I, I thought, God, all the things came together that I'd ever want in a network marketing company. Product, patents, people, great pay plan, principles, perfect timing. And you know, as you know, we're right in the middle of this incredible timing thing right now. So that's why I got involved. Make a difference, make a lot of money and have the time freedom to, to you know, come to Florida for the winter, play golf, whatever I want. Take off a week, take off a month, work hard, whatever I want to do, it's up to me. I think, you know, if I was to ask that question of uh, pretty much all of the leaders within a seer, I would get the pretty much the same answer as that. And, and uh, the, from my perception of a seer, from what I've seen, it is drawing in some of the best leaders in the world because most of them want what you and I wanted was a safe home. We've been looking for this. I've been looking for this all my life. And, uh, but anyway, it's not about me, but I, I absolutely concur with your answer. This is a, 
for a networker, for a veteran, or even somebody who's not a veteran, but the veteran appreciates this because of other journeys we've traveled, other ups and downs that we've had to get to this incredible company. So, uh, so thank you very much uh, for that answer. Great answer, thank you. And, and now let me, let, me stay, let, me, let me thank you for something. You said a safe home, and I've heard this, when networkers come to this, and they've, and I've, got, we've, I've been doing it now for what, nine years, and I, I see people say, oh, get in this, networkers say, get in this, I'm making this much money, this is great. And I'm like, I evaluate, and I'm not gonna get involved with anything, I'm just evaluating to, to see what it is that they're doing. And you can always find a flaw, and you know that it's gonna go through this curve and be gone. And, and most of these people have been jumping from, from, from different makeup things, to anti-aging things, to Bitcoin, to this, to that, and, and, and they're looking for a safe home. And, and the networkers that take the time to look at this seriously, come to a convention, come meet the founders, come meet the CEO, um, they realize this is, this, is, this is their last rodeo. This, this is the safe home. This is what they've been looking for their whole life, which yeah. hoped existed, but really didn't think exists. We have it now. Yeah, and a, and a true legacy company, you know, from my part, it was, it was creating something of a legacy. You know, I watch a lot of uh, uh, companies, I, I guess you call them flash in the pans, and they, uh, uh, but I, you know, for, for you and I, for most of us belonging to a legacy company and being in business with Virtus and Tyler Norton is incredible. We've just posted uh, as a company, a CEO, uh, the greatest, the largest sales month in the history, the, the 10 year history of the company uh, in March. And uh, it's an incredible opportunity for in the looking uh, zone right now. Where do you see a SEA going? Like if people, somebody asked you, where do you see a SEA being in the next, uh, let's say two to five years, where do you see this company and this, this, this market for this incredible technology going? Well, when I saw what the drink did version of it <clears throat> at the beginning, I said, this is, this is the most important advancement in health since I've been alive, possibly, possibly ever. And that sounds like exaggeration. If you haven't seen what the product, six months of using the product on people, you'll know why I say that I tell people. Um, but when the gel came out in 14 and it's marketed for anti-aging and we saw what happened when people had like areas of stress or concern, you know, and they rate their stress or concern on a scale of one to 10 and they put the gel on three times in five minutes, we watch what happens to nine of them on average within 10 minutes. And they're like, wow, how do I get this? I realized things were going to move a little faster because this is kind of esoteric. It can take 90 days. It can take one day or 90 days to have their response. But entrepreneurs take the gel out and they put it on 10 people that are, have stress or concern in areas little or bad. Um, they, they know. And I realized it was going to speed up. So when I say that, that this company I felt was going to be and is going to be biggest network marketing company in the history of the world. That's no BS. I honest to God believe that because I know, not just as a doctor, just as a human being, seeing what this does for people and the passion and the obligation people have to share it. The only company that's ever done 10 billion, I think, has been Amway. And, and Amway, thank God for Amway, they saved network marketing for the United States anyway, uh, through a lawsuit many years ago. But, you know, I, I, Amway's got great products and it's a legacy company, but I don't think the timing is that good on Amway. I mean, they, they're, I think they're eight, the eight billions they do now a year, a lot of money, big company. We're, we're not there yet. When you ask, what do I see happening? So, but two years ago, we got into the top 100 of the DSN, DSA top 100. You know, we, we're, we're around 100 and we went um, in 18 to 77. Last year, we're 44. So we're moving up the charts, right? Um, this product takes some explanation. It's not like, you know, well, this makeup is better than your makeup or this berry is better than your berry. There's nothing like this. I mean, it's, it's created its own category. So it's been a little slower grow, but things have started to really move. And um, I think the gel has helped that to validate the Redox technology. But the article that I saw in Business for Home magazine in April, um, is pretty telling. It shows the, the fastest growing companies in network marketing from 2018 to 2019. And ASEA was like number 50 in the 50s, right? And you're like, well, that's impressive. That's impressive. But if you look deeper at those numbers, it's, it's, it's very telling now. It shows where we are. And it's much more than there were in the 50s. So we grew like 40 some percent. We went from 120 million, 170 million in 2018, 19. 
if you look at the companies that were ahead of ASEA, it shows their, their revenue from 2018 to 2019. Some of them were 3,000% growth, 800% growth. But if you look at the revenue in 2018, there wasn't any revenue in 18. So it's the whole flash in the pan thing. These, these are 90% 90, 90 of network marketing, less than 10% of network marketing companies make it to their fifth birthday. That means 90% of them fail. So most of these companies that didn't exist in 18 or started in 17, there's over a 90% chance they're not even gonna be here. We're in our 10th year, 11th year now, and we're just hitting momentum. We're just starting to hit it. And then if you look at people that say to me, oh, I'm looking at, at other companies and, and nothing against things like Herbalife or Amway. I mean, honestly, God, nothing. But if people are looking at timing, like are you hitting it at the right time? Those companies are stagnant. They're huge companies. They're multi-billion dollar companies, but they're stagnant. They have lots of users of product and poor people get involved with some opportunities, flash in the pan, it'll be gone, or they're getting involved because, oh, we're the biggest and whatever. But I, on, I, I would pose to say that, that the, the timing isn't there. So, you know, um, Tyler Norton, one of the founders of the company, has stated very conservatively, they, are, they do not hype anything. It'll be a $500 million company by 2020, I think 2024. I think that is a gross underestimation. I think he's being very, very conservative. This thing is about to explode and we're starting the last couple of years, we're starting to see it. In the middle of this COVID-19 thing in March, we have our biggest month ever at both recruitment and volume, which is, which is we're in it. We're in, we're in the tidal wave right now. And the other big thing uh, to add to what you just said, I think, is the fact that we don't have any competition. Uh, in every other network marketing company that there is on the planet right now, there is a competitor. There is a, there is a market for where you can get those products somewhere else. In fact, probably hundreds of other places. There is nowhere else you can buy a C. You can't buy it from anywhere else. It's the only company on the planet that produces these redox molecules. And so for an entrepreneur like you and I, it's, it's, I use the analogy, it's kind of like waving raw meat in front of a savage dog. You know, if the, if the, if the, if the person is looking, it's just incredible because we don't run with any competitors and we won't for the next 20 years, most likely. My final question. Probably, probably longer than that now. I mean, I mean, we have patents, but they have trade secrets and they produce all the product in the U.S. in an FDA registered facility. And Coca-Cola, I mean, there are no patents, it's trade secrets. You cannot yeah. reverse engineer this. So that's another thing. If I was going to build something, I wanted to be around for a long time. So number one, patents. Because if, if, if they patented everything about it, they'd have to list what it is. They don't want to list what it is because then when the, when the patents run out, people can do it. So it's a lot of it's trade secrets. Um, yeah. But I didn't want to build something and have it disappear. I have, you know, this is, I want, number one, for my family, this is legacy. This is an en enormous amount of money we're talking about. I mean, I, I can't, I'm not leaving all this money to my children. This is, I, this is going to be going to charities, to causes, to things. To, and I like to, not just give people things, teach them how to fish instead of give them fish. But I wanted to be around and I wanted to bring people into something I'd be proud of that I knew that I, like, I'm, look, nothing is 100% in this world. But if I'm going to bring people into something, I, I, I did that in the other company. I felt horrible when I got to the top and met those people and went and met them, got to know them and said, what if I led these people into? I want to be proud of what I'm bringing people into. And this, yeah. I certainly am. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, for me, one of the keys, a building a business, when I look at a, a business like this, is who owns the company? Because you and I don't. We have a, we have a heavy trust in Virtus and Tyler Norton. And, uh, you know, there's some of the most, I, I tell people every night when I speak to them or share this opportunity that Virtus remains as one of the most significant human beings that I've ever met. Funnily enough, when I first went to meet Virtus back in 2014, and he mentioned about the patents rolling forward 20 years. And in my melancholy state, I went and asked him at the end of the meeting, I said, so what happens at the end of the 20 years? And he kind of, he kind of put his arm around me uh, and uh, he kind of patted me on the head. He didn't pat me on the head, but he kind of put his arm around me and uh, he kind of smiled at me. He said, well, don't worry. He said, we, we're rolling those patents on. They have a, a way of being able to roll them on. So it'll be a long time to come before anybody gets close to this technology. So, um, and by then we'll, we'll have the world market. One final question, if I may, 
uh, David, what advice would you give to somebody who is looking at onboarding with the ASEA business right now? And given, uh, I want to put this in, ask this in context of where you see the industry being right now, given uh, post the pandemic, uh, we spoke briefly about this before, what would you say to somebody that's looking at this from an opportunity point of view, given the timing that we're seeing in the history of both ASEA and also the world right now? Well, I think when people really, right, well, right now, urgently, people are concerned about two things, their health, um, their immune system, their health, and their current finances, how they're gonna pay the bills. But I think what's keeping people up at night is what's going to, what, what does the future bring? Um, this is ushered in 9-11 changed things around the world and this changed things more than 9-11 did. Um, the economies of the world are, are going to come back, um, but there's going to be a lot of carnage. There are a lot of people that are out of business, bankruptcies, they can't come back. I mean, they, they, they're going to have to start over again. Banks are going to have to forgive loans because of bankruptcies. Um, things have changed. And I think I've always said that, that one of the thing, reasons people should look at this is to have a plan B. You know, have your A job or your plan A where you're making your money to support your family but build some residual wealth in case something happens to your plan A. You get hit by a car, you, whatever company downsizes you, who saw it was going to be a pandemic, right? Or if you're a business owner, you know, all your money is dependent upon you. Have a plan B, number one. Um, number two, um, Like you say, you know, you don't, you don't own, you don't, we don't own this company. We have to trust the people running it. That's the only thing that we can't really control with what we have here because we have, we can control everything else. And in the world, there's so many things that we just cannot control. I think um, people are much more open to plan B's now. I always say people sometimes not, they, they don't want a plan B or they don't want, they don't feel the need for a plan B until they need one. Now's the time to start building this thing. Um, if, if you're looking at this, look hard. Don't just look on the superficial level. Get the product. If you got to see it work, test it on 10 people. Take the gel, put it on 10. In the first day, you'll know. Put it on 10 people who, who have some area of concern. Watch what happens. To you. Come to know it's real right away. And if you have are struggling or settling financially, time freedom-wise, life satisfaction, I think right now the big one is money. More than anything, I mean, I think people right now would do anything to make money if it was legal. Um, they, they they need to make money and into the future. Don't don't be a sitting duck for this when it happens again. You know, this is not get rich quick. This takes work, effort, and energy. Right. The only way people get paid is when the product is is used. Money back guarantee on the product. But get serious about investigating it. And then if you're going to do this as a as a business, tie into all the support that you have you're not in business you're in business for yourself but not by yourself but we, i think we're gonna i felt that that tyler norton's um prediction of of being a half a billion dollar a year company in by 2024 was was really an underestimate it'll be faster than that um but i think covid kind of even is, has expedited that it's going to shorten that curve we, we are just so perfectly aligned with the mentality of the world right now. People think this is the first pandemic. It isn't. And the things have changed now. People want to strengthen themselves, both physically and financially, so they're, they're insulated from this. I am, you and I, and Christina, we're insulated. Why? Because we did the work. We built it, we built it, we built it, and we put effort into it. It takes effort. And, and so what I would say is just be very serious about the due diligence if you have a need in your life for a change and you don't want to be in this position again or you want to be in a better position for the rest of your life. And once you do your due, due diligence, if you do it, if you do a good one, you're going to know that everything you've said is 100% true and you're going to thank God that someone brought it to you and then get to work and we'll help you do it. Appreciate your time. I know you're, you're a very, very busy man and I'm sure at these times you're even busier. So. David, thank you very much on behalf of uh, all of our organizations. Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, share with us. And uh, thanks, Christina, for recording this. Honestly, I'd like to thank you both for this very insightful interview. 
um, both uh, Dr. Silverman and Malcolm. And um, I guess just as a way to round it off, if you are looking at this for the first time, um, please get back to the person that has shared with you this information. You might be evaluating the breakthrough or the opportunity, but I, I'm certain this interview has given you insights onto what's really on the table. Um, as Dr. Silverman said, so many people are out there settling, settling for average health, settling for average lifestyles. And I guess the question I'd like to leave you with is, based on what you've seen, can a seer give you the life that you want? The chance to make an impact, the chance to do good in the world, to make a limitless residual income, to have freedom choices. Um, because that's really the only question that matters. Not are you talented enough, are you well connected enough, you know, do you feel like doing it? The only question that matters is, can this give me the results? And if this interview has given you some insights into what those results are, and you'd like to be part of it, we would love to welcome you to the team. This uh, is a perfect storm that only happens once in a lifetime to work with a breakthrough, the timing, the company and the leadership. So we're very blessed to have had uh, both Dr. Silverman and Malcolm on tonight's call. A lot of talent on this interview. Thanks guys and have a good evening.